Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays and now it's time for your weekly Minecraft update and we had a, the stream a little bit later in the week than normal so if you were if you were there on Thursday thank you for joining in and I hope you enjoyed it and well one of the things I made was I upgraded from the tier 1 starlight crafting to tier 2 starlight crafting yes yeah, so here we go here's the tier 1 the luminous crafting table which is a standalone block single crafting table thing you go along you put things on it you boop it with a wand it makes the thing fairly straightforward n n nice and easy the tier 2 one the starlight crafting altar is a bit more complicated because it's a multi-block structure which means you need to have all of this stuff extra around it and this is made up of all kinds of different types of marble so we've got um, sooty marble we've got marble bricks we've got marble arch we've got marble pillar we've got chiseled marble and all of these have to be put down in the right in the right order in the right pattern in the right configuration in order for it to work now, I was a bit curious as to how we were supposed to know about this. It turns out you look in the um, um, in your astral tome, which I seem to have two lexica botanicas, which is incredibly untidy of me. But you can have a look in here. And one of the things in here somewhere, I think it was in the exploration section. This is a terrible user interface. I don't know who designed this, but it needed a slap. Anyway, down here somewhere, this one, Starlight Crafting Altar. Here we go. So you can see here, this is the this is the way it needs to be set up. And from here, you can get an idea of how it needs to be built. So we, we can click on, um, we can mouse over this, and it shows you what all the different block types are. So obviously the black one is the sooty marble. The one with the vertical stripes and the and the yeah, um, noughts and crosses on the top is marble pillar. Then you've got marble chisel marble, and so on and so on. So you can sort of tell which one's which from there. And you can also use this button here to flick through the layers and see what each different layer of the thing is supposed to look like. So between those two things, you can you can tell relatively easily what what it's like to be built, what 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 is needed, and what you need to do to build it. Now the problem with this is the same as most of the Minecraft things, um, and actually quite a lot of games is that the, it'd be not. Ooh, you can rotate it as well. I didn't. I hadn't. I had not noticed that. Um, the problem is you can't leave this open and tuck it into a corner of the screen while you're working on it. So you have to sort of look at it and go, okay, so there's a sort of a, and a three by three square and each each corner is a two by two square of the sooty marble and you fill in all the way around here with that and then you do this here and there and, and so on. So it's it's a bit of a faff trying to get it all, try, trying to trying to remember it. But I mean, this is largely down to me having a terrible memory and I'm, I will accept that. I might have told you before, I can't remember. Um, so that... But yeah, so it was, it's a bit of it's a bit of a faff with all these things where you're trying where you're trying to remember the uh, the recipes and the designs. But I managed to get through it eventually. Uh, okay, close it like that. And then from there, I was then able to make a telescope. And this is the sort of this is the step up from the um, from the spyglass that I made in the, with the tier one um, starlight crafting table. Now with the, now got a tier two. There was a quest in here, so I thought I might as well I might as well do this one um, on the tier two quest line up here so after making the um after making the crafting altar and the platform for it you can then make a telescope so i did that and that's allowed me to add a few more um constellations to my my list of discovered ones if we're looking constellations um i've now well i've these these are all the ones i know about i f there there is a way of finding more i can't remember what that is but um, maybe i'll look into that another time but these are the ones i know about and i think i've now found them all in the sky so as you see as this as the uh, the sun, sun goes down you can then see some of these constellations starting to appear in the sky and they've been drawn out like this which is mildly helpful i'm not quite I, i'm not sure what you use constellations for i haven't got to that stage of the white magic but yeah it it, it is it is a thing and it's a thing so i've been doing it also, and possibly more interestingly, we've had a big push, and we actually have now managed to automate the um, the runic altar. And this, I have to admit, was mostly Tristan's doing, or at least mostly Tristan's advising. Um, I, I helped a bit, but I think he he certainly did the hard part of the work over here. So what we've done, we, we, we've Tristan informed me that if you if you stick up a redstone comparator against the side of the runic altar, it will output a one when there is stuff in the altar, and it will output a two when there is enough stuff in the altar and it is ready to 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 make the thing. So when it's when it's got all the bits and pieces in for a valid recipe and it's imported enough mana from this mana pool to be able to make whatever the rune is that you've put the bits in for, you will then get a two out of this. So. As you can hopefully remember, with redstone, this, if you put down normal redstone like this, it has a fairly high resistance. So every square, it drops one signal value. So if a 1 comes out, you'll get a 1 here and a 0 here. If it's outputting a 2, you'll get a 2 here and a 1 here. And then these uh, repeaters will detect that. And if there's anything on, on the input, it will output a full, full, full size signal. This red alloy wire is similar to redstone powder on the floor except it doesn't have that internal resistance so it can carry a signal as far as you want without worrying about it, it degrading so what we've got along here let's see if i can get this let's see if i can actually get this right because i think hopefully i can 
is we have the automatic precision dropper here that will take in all of the ingredients for a recipe and dump them out and because on here we've got the the blocking mode it will push out all of the stuff for the first recipe and then wait until this is empty the uh, precision dropper here will dump all the stuff out and then we'll, we'll report a, and then this will, the crafting table will report a signal of one which comes around here um, and then puts and then puts the signal into here to stop it importing the next recipe I believe I think that's how it works um, so that's what so that's what the one signal does the two signal then so this will then all the things will drop onto the altar um, it will pick up the manor and then when it's ready it will output a two signal so this will go live we we'll get a signal coming around here which goes into here and here we have a mechanical user with a wand of the forest in it and that means that when we get a two signal out and this is ready after a brief delay because of this thing um, to make sure everything is actually genuinely ready this thing will boop with a wand and make the rune this then scatters all the bits and pieces everywhere um, and any time there's a two signal coming out this picker upper will be turned on that's why there's a not gate in here um, is that right? I think that's right. Uh, yes, because this is this is deactivates on redstone. So when the, when the, so when this is live, this goes to a low, and therefore this is li this one is turned on. Um, now we could have actually got rid of the not gate and just swapped over how this one works, but we didn't think of that. Um, so that means that when there's a two, the all the stuff will at that point be locked up by this. It'll be booped by the um, the the boopinator, and therefore the the, uh, the runes will be created, and then only then will this be turned on. It will scoop up all of the runes that are sat here before the uh, before the altar runic altar has a chance to pick any of them up and break everything. So that work that actually seems to work. I've also put in a second um, range collector here. This is the one for the terra steel because we want that to be on all the time and always grab any terra steel that appears here. But as you might remember, this is slightly more complicated because when a, when you make the runes of seasons, it creates the runes of um, it, it put gives you back the runes of elements to create those runes of seasons, and so things don't go. So, so, so you you need to be able to pick those up, but you also need to not pick them up when they're first put out in order to go onto the altar. Otherwise, you'll have all. Otherwise, you'll definitely have a bad time. So that means this all works. So if I come over here and I say I would like a rune of summer. Uh, we've already got four of them, but let's make another one anyway. So if we go over to craftable, I can say, yes, I would like to make a rune of summer. Make it so. And then I come over here. All the stuff has been passed out onto the onto the altar by the by the um, automatic precision dropper. And you can see there on the right hand side the uh, the uh, the pie chart of the mana filling up. So that fills up and up and up. And then when that gets to full, it automatically gets... Put, well, there's a, then a delay here. This will then send the signal round, like that. It automatically pot pokes it. All of the runes appear, but they've all disappeared immediately because these things are really, really quick. So that has now finished the recipe. It's picked up all the runes, and they've gone back into the system. So <clears throat> that has worked. That is automated rune, uh, rune creation. Um, and... I feel like that's quite an achievement. It's not my achievement, admittedly. As I said, Tristan did most of the work. I, I did come in and sort of listen to him talking about it and sort of helped on fin helped with finishing it off. But I will give him most of the credit for it. So well done there. The other thing, and this is entirely my doings, is over here. Um, we've got a system that's automatically creating the um, the living rock and the living wood. So this runs along a similar idea to many, many other things we've made in the past. You've got the um, ME interfaces here that have, this one has a living wood pattern in it that says you use one oak. In order to make living wood, take one oak and put it into this into the thing on the, the arrows point to. The thing the arrows point to is a placer which has ten oak in it at the moment. So it's placing those down here and the oak sits here for quite a while. It takes a minute for this pure daisy to turn anything around. Oop, there we go, into living wood like that. Then this thing automatically mines if it sees living wood or apparently dianite block, because that was a temporary thing put in to prevent it from misbehaving. But it will mine the living wood and then just drop it on the floor, um, because this is just a miner. It is not a picker-upper. It is just a miner. Then over here, this thing is a another um, another range collector. This one's whitelisted for living wood and living rock. So when they get dropped on the floor by these miners, then it, picks, it automatically picks them up. So that was, there you go, their living rock appeared there, got mined by this thing with the diamond pickaxe that's inside it, and immediately picked up. So... This is working through, uh, there's a bit of a backlog, but it's working through and making them. Um, so this one is a little bit different. This one needs to have a pickaxe in it. So these things will basically, they essentially go along and they will just left click on whatever you, you've got. So if, you, if you're mining wood, that's fine because you can punch wood and it will turn into, um, and, it will and it will drop the wood and you can then pick it up and use it. Rock and stones and things, not so helpful. So the living rock has to be 
mined up by a pickaxe. So we put a diamond pickaxe in here. It's gradually getting used up. We've used uh, 10 of its durability so far. So this goes a long, long way because it's got the Unbreaking 3 on it, which means there's something like a, a 20 or 40% chance. I forget what the numbers are. I think it's a 40% chance of it actually getting damaged when it picks or using up some durability when it picks something up. So it's, it's mined 50 and used 10. So, um, so it's, yeah, okay, that's 20% of the time. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, but these these between them will will mine the uh, the blocks up, and then more. As you can see, each time a block is mined up, another one gets put down. So eventually, they'll get through all of the stuff that's in their inventory, and we'll have plenty of the um, plenty of the supplies. Now, as I say, they get picked up by the uh, the range collector here and put into this in, uh, in MME interface to get them back into the system. In this ME interface, we've got these things up at the top, we, so, so we configured it to say I want to have 64 living wood and 64 living rock in there at all times. Um, and that means that we, um, and also to craft, we've got a crafting card in here that tells it to do, do the crafting if there is, if there's insufficient in there. So at the moment there is sufficient in there, but it's still crafting because I took them out to demonstrate how the machine worked and it filled these things up and so it's just gone a bit crazy about it. But we're going to, so that means we're going to have a bit more than we need to. But this does mean that in the future, as we use the living wood and the living rock, when it drops below 64 in the main store, when it drops below zero in the main, the rest of the storage and we start pulling from here, it will then automatically grow more living wood living rock to replace those so we should never run out because as you can see these take quite a long time to, to produce so if you had a recipe that required five living wood you don't want to wait five minutes for it to produce so we've got a buffer in here of 64 so it will there's always a stack available in theory and you just use that up gradually and it gets ready and it gets replenished while you're while you're doing other things and in order to make that work you need to put a storage bus on the side here um, have it on imp extract only mode um, and that tells the system that it can use what is inside here for um, for other bu for builds elsewhere so that's why that's hooked in hooked up here like this okay so that's that's the automated that's the automated uh, living wood living rock and this is this is working really well I'm very pleased with that especially as it was well, I hesitate a little bit to say it was all my doing because I did ask people for um, advice and suggestions quite a bit for it. But I managed to get, but I did manage to get it working without anyone having to come over and build the whole thing for me, which is which is nice. And I didn't have too much of a sense of humour failure with it either, which is uh, again nice. <laughs> so that's basically all I've been up to today. Um, I mean, I did move. I moved some of the um, the starlight crafting stuff from here over to there because I wanted to have the well because the altar is now so much bigger. I felt it needed to be separate. Um, and also because it made, I felt it made, made sense to have to put that all over there. This this starlight stuff should probably be moved over there as well at some point. Um, I'll get a chest mover and move, move them over. But at the moment, I just I haven't bothered. I do want to. I kind of want to build some kind of hut around a lot of these automated systems so they're not just sort of sat out in the rain but so they're up here and they look like they're things that they're places where stuff happens i can't build anything around this because it needs a good view of the sky so the um the altar if i right click on it you can see how much starlight it's getting at the moment which is not very much because well it is daytime it's a rather cloudy day as well so it's not it's not got a good view of the sky but at night time that fills up quite a lot further far enough to make a telescope at least i haven't i haven't actually checked how far it'll go up at maximum but it does but it's yeah it's it's, it's not bad it fills up to a decent level so other people well let's see uh, let's talk about what al's been doing because i understand most of that i think so he's been um largely working on a um, crafting tree which is down here in, in the basement area so if we go down and go down again and then follow this tunnel over here it's, a, it's quite a long walk he's also quite pleased with these lap with these um, inverted white lamps apparently because yeah they, they do look pretty cool actually Ooh, lag there we go they do look pretty cool actually and they they illuminate the area up quite nicely and you can tuck them away they look let's just say they look a little bit better than torches uh, so maybe we should get a lot more of these and put them basically everywhere so yes, his crafting tree is down here in the sub sub basement 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 area, way below ground. Um, he's, he's sort of marbled everywhere up. So this explains why I was having trouble finding marble earlier when I was trying to make the um, make the crafting altar. There was enough of it, but only just. Um, so yeah, Al has apparently used it all up. So the, what this is is a massive is, is a massive um, dense cable here with 32 channels on it, connected to the P2P interface and then up to the um, the main computer systems upstairs, which I'll show you in uh, again in a little while. So that means we have a full 32 data ports available here or 32 channels that's what they're called in this and so in here there are 32 um, of the interface ME interfaces which you can't which you can't get at because they're completely surrounded by molecular assemblers now the way this works is that the ME interfaces that's the, the ones that aren't see-through have 
a number of recipes in them. So you saw that earlier when I was talking about the living wood and living rock uh, assembly things. Um, and these ones are, are completely surrounded by molecular assemblers because molecular assemblers can do a three by three craft based on a pattern um, and then output the, the thing that's, that, that comes from there and the interfaces know about know that they've got the molecular assemblers so if you send a recipe to an in, if you tell an interface to make something it will pull in all of the bits and pieces it needs off the off the computer system put them out into the molecular assembler which will do the assembling and then put it back into the interface which will then put it back into the computer system now the big problem with this <clears throat> is that you can't actually get at any of the interfaces. There is a way around that, which I shall talk about in a moment. But the, basically the idea is that you have this. This is a, a cunning construction um, that allows you to get lots and lots of um, ME interfaces. There we go. Here, here are some interfaces that you can actually see. So here, here, this is where you put the recipes. But there's plenty of space in this at the moment. But this gets you, allows you to get lots and lots of ME interfaces in in such a way that you can connect it all up to the 32 channel cable at the top without overloading it too much. Now I know Al has done another video on this where he goes into a lot more detail about it so if you want to know more about it I suggest you go and watch his video um, but in short that means in there there are 32 uh, interfaces each of which can take nine recipes so that's 200 and to almost 300 um, different um, recipes that can now three by three recipes that now can now be crafted. So in order to get that programmed up, you need to come back upstairs into this area, which is convenient because you don't want to have to go down there every single time you do something. And then you can use this interface terminal. And this shows another terrible user interface because this should be a lot taller because I've got a massive um, scroll bar here. But each of these are various interface interfaces. And so up here, these, these are ones that, for example, these are the ones that are up in the... Um, I don't know how the uh, the naming scheme works here, but, but some of them aren't named. So these are the ones that are up on the top of my tower. So here, these are all. This is the interface that makes all the runes. This is the one that makes all of the, um, the that does all the mana soaking. This is the one that makes the terra steel. Then we've got down here. We've got some that connects up to carpenters. These are presumably one. This is the one in the enrichment chamber. So some of these have been labelled, and I don't know how he's labelled them, but he has. Um, so we've got few atom dust and so on. So down here, eventually, we'll get to the um, molecular assembler one. So down here. This is the these molecular assembler section. This massive section here is all of those interfaces down there in his tree. So in here, you can put in absolutely anything you want, a pattern for absolutely anything you want that is made in a three by three assembler um, in order to, uh, to be produced. So for example, we've got um, we've got inori, inori crystals. So you, turn, you can turn one inori crystal block into nine inori crystals should you need to. You can make a redstone uh, torch from a stick and a redstone. All the sort of the fairly standard recipes. And then you get some slightly more complicated ones. So we've got servos now. This is something I was um, saying, hey, these don't exist before in, in the last stream. So somebody's actually come in and done this, which is very helpful of them. So now we've got a, a servo takes in, um, makes makes one servo out of three glass, two iron plates and a redstone servo. You can also make the redstone servo there. So, so that's nice. Those, those work together. So this means if you request a servo, it can go off and make all of the bits and pieces required to make it automatically and then it'll just drop out the bit you need at the end and um, we've also got down uh, down the oh, various types of gears and things then you've got the ones that go through a furnace you've got the reinforced filter i don't know what that is um okay, so this is a, this is called spruce chest which is a little bit odd but i suspect this is uh yes this is this is things that make where, where we've got we're making things this 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 one um will be connected up to one of the, the squashing things i forget the name but uh, not a pulverizer but a compressor I, I don't know the things that make plates out of other things um so we've got all of the plate all the plate recipes in there it also seems to show how much um is stored in there so we've got 64 of each of these plates in storage which is quite nice um and none of all of these things so these are not stored in there those are just stored in normal um in the normal computer system because these are really quick to craft so you don't need you don't need a, a buffer of those um but yeah you can, as you say you scroll down through here you can see all of the different things that can be made from various different places various different machines and um yeah it gives you an idea of what what can be done oh so i also mentioned that i'd say how al's getting his connections up to here so th this presumably and no, that's only 13 somewhere maybe it's downstairs there is another go down is that even? That's not even an elevator. <laughs> Try again. There we go. Right, so down here, perhaps, there'll be the cable coming up from Al's massive, massive crafting area. Um, and I don't know where that's coming up. So I know that, but somewhere it comes back into the system. It might be this one. No, it's not this one. Um, ah, here we go. This is, this is where it is. So one of the, yes, there we go. There's the cyan cable that matches the other cyan cable at the other end. Now, they don't have to match, but it's easier for our sanity if they do, because it's a lot easier to say the cyan cable rather than the C6FB cable. Um, 
yeah so this is the other this is essentially is the other end of the p2p connection that goes down to his um, massive crafting area so as you can see you've got another 32 channel cable with all channels used coming out of here and going straight into the me controller above so essentially you can you can put in 32 channels into each face of one of these me controllers um and then you put that onto a P2P thing. And so you can then carry potentially 32 channels. Each if each of those channels is carrying 32 channels. So that's an enormous number of potential channels available because otherwise you'd have all kinds of difficulties and issues and problems and things. So, th but this allows us to get around that sort of thing by just by having the, uh, by using the P2P system, which condenses all of those 32 channels down onto a single channel. We did some experiments in what we're calling P3P earlier, which is where you then try and condense down all those 32 condensed channels onto even onto, onto another onto another single channel. I don't remember whether that ended up working in the end. I think we were told it did work, and then we we're told actually that was a mistake and it didn't work. And there was some experimentation going on, and nobody's quite sure, but it probably doesn't work. So we're uh, yeah, we're going to have to we, we're going to have to just find other ways. If, if we ever get to the level where we're needing that many channels, which is a crazy number, to be honest, we're going to have to do some sort of probably rejigging of, of how all the cables run and things like that. But but for now, it works pretty nicely. I believe Al also went did some more playing around with bees because I heard him talking about Republicans and um, bees having lost their queens and their princesses and things. So I, he's been doing some other stuff there, but I wouldn't like to tell you exactly what. So next on to Tristan. Um, I did say earlier that um, he's been helping me quite a lot with the um, uh, with the white magic stuff. He also says that down here opposite the nuclear reactor, he has made a um, some sort of smelting system. So I need to try and get through through this wall. You can see it through this through this wall. There is an advanced alloy smelter on the other side. So the question is, how do I get through there? And I guess it's probably going to be like this. And then maybe I'll repair this, or maybe I'll just wait for Mike, Mike to rage. Uh, there we go, got through. Because I didn't want to break the cable because that's going, that's doing important things. So I thought, right, I'll just mine my mine, mine my way through underneath. So here we have this is this is presumably an advanced alloy smelting factory. So we've got here we've got machine controller. Um, it is an advanced alloy smelting factory. It says so, um, but it's missing input items. So presumably this means it's just idle at the moment. Um, so over here, and that's that's an output. Over here, this is an input. So over here, if we look in here, we've got we've got patterns here for a triberium ingots and uh, Ignitz ingots. So this takes in Tiberium and Basalt and produces Triberium um, with some odd uh, ratios in there, but never mind. It's, this is just how it works. So ti ti Triberium, Triberium feels like it should be the third tier of Tiberium, but um, maybe, maybe we skipped over Biberium in the middle. I don't know. And then I, I don't know what any of these things are for, but the, basically this, this works the same way that every other sort of system does in that we have a, an interface that outputs into a chest. The chest gets the stuff in it. And then we then have a, a servo that pulls out of the chest into an item duct that puts it into a machine. And in this case, Tristan will have found the recipe for the machine or found it. it maybe it's in a quest line or something like that. So he's, he's researched what, what it's supposed to do, how it, how it works, how you put it together and been able to then build up this this alloy smelter and then on the other side we've got a servo that pulls things out from the out item output part module on the smelter so there's presumably an item input on the other side yes there is and then dumps it into this interface and that tells the computer and that puts it back into the computer and there's presumably a cable running underneath the whole thing um oh no it runs around behind it there, there it is uh, that then goes back up through here and as you can see goes back into the system into the main network over there through a uh, through a p2p controller there so that's all pretty standard for our, our setup. So if you don't know how any of this works, it's probably explained in the older videos. Whether it's explained well or badly, I wouldn't like to say. But if you have any questions, do let me know, and I'll uh, I'll try and cover them in the next video. Um, yes, so that's that's the, that's one of these systems. As you can see, this is using this is using three channels. I'm not sure why, because there's one interface there. There's one interface there. Oh, and there's a thing down there, an ex a fluid export bus. Okay, so this this also takes in ah oh here we go. This takes in lava to power power the thing. So that's why there's a third one because it takes in lava to heat the heat the whole thing up. And that's where the fuel comes from. That makes a lot of sense. We do seem to have quite a lot of lava available. I know we've got various automated lava production systems. What's that? It's a thing up there that I do not recognise. Oh, it's a wireless receiver. Okay. Um, that might be for that. That I imagine is for the computer computer network system, and probably allows you to tap in without having to run all the cables. But we've run all the cables anyway, so who knows? And through here, there's even more cables. But this seems to be this is using nine channels. This is probably coming up from another machinery area. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's the um. There's the main computer area just through there. So this is an odd way to get to it. But you go, you can go all the way around to get to it. So I don't know why Tristan didn't just tap in over from over here. But maybe there was a reason. There probably was. Um, he seems to know what he's doing most of the time. Um, maybe there's just a nice cave here that he discovered and thought this was a good place to go to, to build the whole thing up. 
So as Pete wasn't around today, that uh, last sorry last stream, that brings us on to Mike as the as this the final person in the in in the group. So he's been. I'll I'll build this. I'll rebuild that later, <laughs> or or maybe I won't. Actually, no. Let's do it now. Otherwise, I'll forget and then I'll get in trouble. There we go. And I seem to have one left over that goes in there. Right. And then we put the stairs in like that and that. And you'd never know I was here. Excellent. So, I need to get to the personal crafting area. What's the quickest way to do that? Crafting and bees, this way. Okay, let's go for a run down the corridor. Well, the, um, yep, that seems to be accurate. It says nothing and it seems to be a dead end. Fine. This is the bottom of the, um, the grow, grow tower. This is, I don't know where that goes, but crafting should be down here somewhere. I'm hoping there'll be more time, but, well, there's a way out. Oop, there's not a way out, there's a way down. Here's a way out. Perfect. Crafting building. Right, so Mike has spent a lot of time running through running through the tier 3 quest lines. If we go back to here, we've got the in the quest lines, we've got tier, main quest line, we've got tier 1, 2, 3. So if we go into tier 3, you can see basically, I think Mike basically spent the entire entire stream just churning through recipes in here or um, uh, grinding, the, grinding through these recipes. So we'll have an enormous quantity of random machines, melters, chemical reactors, molten boron, boron, all kinds of things that have been made. And there's lot. And he also ran a power cable across the top of here, apparently. So we've got things like these alloy furnace, manufactory, rock crusher, melter, chemical reactor, atomic reconstruction. Oh, no, the atomic reconstruction was already there. I think the rolling machine might have been there. Industrial electro electrolyzer, chemical reactor. There's just loads and loads of new machines in here that he's been building. And doing all of the other quest stuff that goes along with them. There's an ender chest here, I wonder why. Um, I don't know what they're supposed to be linked up to. What a blizzard. Okay, so there's the, yeah, there's all of these things that he's, he's been building up, all kinds of new stuff to try and push the quest line onwards so we can ideally try and sort of wrap up the uh, the game with a with a with a spaceship launch and just sit and see what and see what see what happens from there because because we we're, because we're thinking of switching over to playing um, Factorio K2SE at some point soon we may not we may not get much we may not get all that much further with Minecraft so we'll, we just want us to get to a, a good stopping point so i think that covers basically everything we've been up to um let me have another look at the list. Yes, I think that's about it. So um, I think that's that. That's going to be the the main part. What's, 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 what's this? It was an architect saw bench. So it's got pedals on the bottom, so you can make the um, the, the uh, saw blade go round because it was presumably pre. Um, where is it? Pre the actual proper sawmill. Um, but the pedals are way up in the air, so I guess you have to use your hands for them. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Oh dear. Okay, so yes, that is, is basically the, uh, the what what I have for you today. Um, there's going to be some changes on the channel, so um, we, we, because I'm I'm approaching the end of my current Factorio run through, we're going to be starting another uh, space exploration run with the new version, and also with the Crastorio 2 uh, mod pack installed as well. So that should make it a bit more a bit more um, interesting, a bit more difficult, and a bit more complicated. But we're bringing in all the people we're playing Minecraft with to to help out a bit with that. So that should make it, well, some of the people we play Minecraft with and some, and some others as well. So that should make it a bit more um, possible because we'll have four people attacking all of the uh, all of the difficulties in there. So yeah, we'll work, we'll work towards that. Um, that'll, that'll be the new Monday night stream uh, going forwards. And on Wednesdays, I'm probably, I'm probably going to start playing Dyson Sphere program because I've been meaning to for quite a long time and it looks like a lot of fun. So that's going to be, that, so that's going to be all, all changing in sort of early mid-August. Um, other videos and streams and things will, will stay more or less as they are. I'm checking out the uh, the Last Starship as well, which is a new game from Introversion, which is currently in very very early access. So that's quite entertaining and worth checking out. So lots to see there. As ever, there'll be loads and loads of videos and loads of things happening on the channel, both on uh, Twitch and YouTube. So make sure you subscribe to everything, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.